Yeah, okay, um... Hmm... Despite it becoming a part of your routine, the next day you stop yourself from taking the tiny pill in the morning. Ooh, as per usual, side effects have been an annoyance and you're pretty convinced that you no longer need them. The rest of the day goes by as normal and you believe that you've made the correct choice. However, as time goes on, the familiar pit of despair in the back of your mind re reopens, reaches out to pull you back in. You feel the familiar self-hatred and anxiety wrap itself around your brain, choking it. All of this feels much, much worse than the side effects of medication, so you resume taking it and desperately wait for the readjustment period to be over. You'll not make this mistake again. Okay. Yet another sleepless Thursday night. You're at Alex's apartment, wide awake in bed as she's sleeping peacefully beside you. She fell asleep hours ago. You've been laying here, unable to shut your brain up long enough to fall asleep. You've added the feelings of insecurity about your relationship to the rest of the noise in your head, keeping you up tonight. It's kind of a tense night between the two of you. You're over after a stressful day at work, and as you made dinner together, you barely said a word. You were stuck in your own head and had a hard time really being present with her as your thoughts turned off. All the ways you feel like you're deficient as being a good person, beating yourself up mentally for each one. She told you she couldn't tell you were in one. She could tell you were in one of your moods, and she said she wouldn't push you. I was talking to you as the two of you sat together, sat on the couch. You wanted to tell her how much you love her, but you couldn't make the words come out right, and ended up sounding defensive instead. As you lay there next to her now, you trace your fingers around across her arm just lightly enough not to wake her. So I haven't explained her, your depression to her, but you've been ta taking medication and it's starting to feel more and more like a secret you're keeping instead of something she, she simply doesn't know about you yet. It's becoming more and more apparent that it's impacting your relationship with her. I feel guilty about this. I will be also terrified that if she knew exactly how effed up you are, she should leave you. And you're already worried that she's only with you because she doesn't realise how terrible of a person you are yet. And you're afraid that this would be the final thing to expose you. She stays in her sleep and squints as she opens her eyes with the confusion co that comes with waking up. She asks if you're awake and then if everything's okay. Holy shit. <coughs> I think I'll tell her about my situation. I feel like a joke for accidentally waking her up, but you're afraid if you put this off any longer that you won't find the strength to tell her everything later. No, actually, everything isn't okay. Can I tell you something? Something important. Alex sits up, rubbing the sleep out of her eyes. The rest of the night you lay side by side, holding hands as you tell her everything. You tell her how it's more than just feeling sad sometimes. How you feel trapped by your own mind sometimes. Sometimes you feel nothing at all, and how you can't shake it off. She listens the entire time, occasionally asking questions about how this or that works and asking you to explain something further. She squeezes your hand and tells you she understands and she's sad that you didn't tell her sooner. After laying silent for a moment, the weight of what you did hit you. You desperately want her to say something, to tell you how she's feeling about all of this, but you're too afraid of what the answer could be to us. You start convincing yourself that now she knows everything, she's going to leave. There's no way someone could deal with how you really are. So how can I help? What do you need me to do? She asks. You think for a second and the answer you come up with filled you, fills you with despair. I honestly don't know. I wish I knew how to fix this, but don't know that you can do anything. It's just, it's just something I think I have to live with. She looks at you with sad eyes before kissing you on the forehead. I'll live with it with you. I don't know how you could possibly love me. She rolls over and laps her arms around your neck, settling her head on top of yours. You don't need to. Just know that I do. Oh my god. I just told everything to my girlfriend. It's a Friday night and you're laying across your bed feeling pathetic. As you're leaving work tonight, a group of co-workers asked if you wanted to join them for drinks. Feeling antisocial and put on the spot, you declined. 
You have a habit of doing this, you're often so convinced that you're weird and terrible that, uh, that any invitation to hang out will end in disappointing those, for those invited. You, you never feel like you know how to act in group outings. You feel like a total creep since it seems to come out so naturally to anyone who isn't with you. You find yourself petrified of breaking some unknown social rule that you don't often go out. Now however, you find yourself uh, alone at home. Your brain has begun telling you how pathetic and sad you are for being unable to be just a normal person and, can't, and go out with nice people. You can't figure out why you can't just go out and meet people and enjoy yourself, but at the same time, you also feel like no one would possibly want you to hang out if they really knew you because you're dull and weird anyway. You try a typical strategy and blew, boot up Netflix to distract yourself from these feelings, but frustration with yourself builds and you realise you have to do something else with your night. Anything else to take your mind off how awful and lonely you feel right now? What do you do? I don't want to drink. Don't think calling Alex would be fine. Attic's got his own problems, bro. I don't want to mess with him. I think I'll kill the cat if I play with it. I, I, I don't think so. I'll go out somewhere. Alone. Yeah. My entire apartment feels claustrophobic because though you're being choked by how isolated you feel, how trapped you feel just being there with yourself. You can't stand to be here any, lo any longer. So you can grab your coat and start walking. If you walk, if you take a walk and get some air, maybe you can get away from the crushing feeling in your chest. You walk for longer than anticipated, headphones on and blaring a favourite track. What a noob. Well, you know what? You walked over a mile. Oh, that's a nice exercise. The entire time your thoughts start from personal failure to personal failure. No value failures? Alright, that's, that's a pretty good achievement. You feel like you're trying to get away from yourself. However, you end up walking long enough that after the initial stress, the static in your head becomes calm down. Instead of being overbearing noise that it was back in the apartment, you've settled into a calmer state where you're able to zone out and listen to the music. Your steps sink to the rhythm and your headphones in it. It feels almost as if you're meditating. The weather threatens to start raining and you turn back, managing to catch the very start of the rainstorm. Your calm persists as you arrive back at home and go through the measure of getting ready for bed. And you're able to sleep with relative ease that night. It's a cold Saturday afternoon. You've just arrived at Alex's apartment and you're happy to see her after a week of absence. Serious schedules not lining up to just work and school. You argue in the doorway, but she works away sooner than normal and sits down on the couch as you take off your sneakers and lay them in the usual place, right next to hers. There's something I was hoping we could talk about, actually. She says... Holy shit. You feel anxious at hearing those words and move to take a seat on the couch. Your heart starts to race. Is this one of those, we need a tack situations? Did you finally hide enough of your baggage? Did the weak apart make her realise how much better things are without you? She sits down across, across you on the couch and you can tell by the look on her face that she isn't looking forward to saying what she's about to end. You feel your grip tighten on the couch cushion. So, she starts, she breaks eye contact and takes a deep breath which spikes your anxiety. Things with, our, things with us have felt kinda weird lately. It's, like you've been really distant, and I'm, I'm I'm not sure how to take it. I guess I just want to make sure you s still want to do this. is not us? I mean, she notices you grip. She notices you gripping the couch. I mean, I know you have what, difficulties with your situation. I mean, just I don't know how much has to do with it, or if it has to do with me, or. I just don't want to know where we stand. She looks at you with uncertainty and you can practically see the knot of pain in her chest. You try to rein your own knee-jerk reaction to run, unsure of what to say that your mind races. You now you have to choose your next words carefully. The self-deprecation oh, nice. rages in your mind. You try to think through it. You try to sort out what you really want to do here. A myriad of feelings is boiling inside you. Which one do you listen to? Mm. I think the 
to solve it by asking her to move in. That's, that's a nice uh, option if she wasn't depressed, but I don't know. Either four or six. I reckon number six. Alright, you look at Alex's face and you feel your heart break. You were never meant to hurt her. You're torn up for what that that you've caused her pain. You can't help but feel like you've let her down and you want to fix it. You desperately want this relationship to continue to be stronger. It's one of the few good things in your life and you feel like you owe her so much for helping you as much as she has. You're not sure how to solve things other than literally to remove the distance. Let's move in together. It will bring us back together. We could fall asleep together every night reconnect with each other. You're really worried that if Alex were to live with you, she wouldn't be able to deal with your days of being unable to get out of bed on nights where you can do nothing but stare at the wall in panic. However, you're too afraid of losing her to deal with that right now. You want, to, you want to show her that you're serious about the two of you. Maybe I can use this as a reason, a reason to finally get my act together and think to self. Maybe having her around will keep me from being so depressed so often. I'm not sure what to say. This is... Also sudden. Sure, we could try it, but we'll have to figure out logistics and I have to... You interrupt her with a tight hug, which she seems initially tense, but loosens up to first recommit to making things work between the two of you. And uh, sorry, I had to readjust my chair. Get excited while talking about what could be soon. You're tremendously, re re you're tremendously relieved and can't wait to live together. First, you, the first few weeks feel amazing, but you quickly find that your choice was not a wise one. Trying to hide your struggles with your condition from your partner becomes more and more impossible, and you find that you lack any resources to properly deal with the situation that arises as a result. Due to lack of communication, she starts feeling like it's her fault, and a wedge is driven between the two of you. This fact is fuel for, you, for your illness, and it becomes another aspect of your life that you berate yourself for. Despite, despite sleeping in the same bed, she feels further away than ever before. It becomes clear that this didn't fix any of the relationship's problems and it deteriorates far enough that she moves back out after moving in. The reality hits you over the next few days and you spiral into a very deep low. You withdraw entirely and outside of work, your only interaction with another living creature is with your cat. Hardly leave your apartment, despite it practically haunting you with memories of the last weeks of your time with her. You can't stop re you can't stop replaying the failures you made with her over and over in your head, wondering what could have been if you weren't such a beep up. It's gonna take you a long time to get over her. December and you've returned to your parents house to celebrate the holidays with your family. Out the living room window you can see a gentle flurry of snow drifting down to meet the pristine blanket of white from yesterday's unexpected Christmas Eve snowfall. And you quietly laugh to yourself at how incredibly cliche it seems. Still, as you sit down to your dinner you can't help but notice being surrounded by family and the overly kitschy, well, what's this? Pathetic, fusely or insincerely pathetic. Right. I'm sure your mom's decorations have created have actually made you feel relaxed and almost comfortable. Your mom is running around frantically checking the oven and stockings and just generally trying to family time it up. Your dad sits at the head of the table drinking a beer and laughing with your brother Malcolm. His wife Karen is there too, whom you've always gotten along well with, and your parents even agreed to let you bring your kitten along. She's been darting in and out of people's legs, hopping on into laps all night. As you thoughtfully munch away at your turkey, listening to the conversations around you, your thoughts drift back over the last few months. You think about how hard things had gotten, replaying over in your head some of the, your worst, as well as some of your best, memories. 
Seems like all of these things just came to head over the past few months with a sudden flurry of relationship turmoil and professional anxiety, social stress and above all an omnipresent sense of weight that seems you have just recently become aware of. You're drawn out of your reverie. Alright, oh, daydream. Yeah. But it does familiar booming laugh as some cheesy comment Malcolm made seems to have hit his mark. Sitting at that table, you're suddenly immensely glad for the chance to be able to ignore everything for an evening and you not have to struggle trying to explain yourself once. Fortunately, everyone seems to be content with laughing at each other's jokes and discussing favourite sports teams. And for a while, you think you'll be able to get through dinner without any embarrassing personal intrusions. But no sooner did the thought cross your mind, then the table conversation trickles off, leaving a slightly awkward silence to descend upon the dinner. So, how are you doing these days? Your mum asks your mom asks you pointedly. <laughs> you forgot that speech mark down there, mate. It's such a simple question, you said that before. One that you seem to have had to answer countless times recently. Take a moment to collect your thoughts, then looking up, take a deep breath. Well, well, yeah, I can't certainly say that things over the past few months have been easy. You're almost ready to let yourself believe that the worst parts are behind you. It may be difficult to see your past self-loathing on most days, but even so, sometimes you can't help but notice that things do seem to be getting better. One of the more difficult challenges you find yourself having to face on a daily basis is your job. In spite of your attempts at positive thinking, the prospect of going to work every morning still fills you with dread and ennui. Listlessness. Aren't we? Aren't we? Right. With dread and ennui. Alright. Fortunately, you've been able to contain these feelings for the most part. And at least you've been managing your attendance and keeping job performance up that you aren't making things worth by getting into trouble with your boss. Your employment situation may be far from ideal, but now you're content to punch the clock and collect your paycheck. Some evenings when you've been particularly motivated, you've caught yourself hunting through online classifieds and bookmarking some new jobs that look interesting. Who knows, you may not be far from taking a leap and trying for something new. <coughs> it's been some time since you've hung out with any of your friends in earnest, and now that you feel like you're coming out of the woods, you're beginning to feel self-conscious about having alienated them over the past little while. You realise that much of your flakiness and subsequent withdrawal was largely a result from, of trying to hide out from them, hide from them out of embarrassment. The notion of trusting people with your vulnerabil vulnerabilities is very frightening to you, and in your self-loathing, you realise that your behaviour did cut them out. Though it will take a huge leap of faith on your part to resolve and you resolve to repair your social relationships. You've started sending out casual messages to some of your friends asking to hang out and for the most part the responses have been more encouraging than you were expecting. Things with Alex were quite tense for a while. After your conversation with her she really did seem to be taking a more active role in helping to understand your situation. Even so, the past few months tested the limits of your relationship to the limit. Yeah, that bit doesn't exactly make sense. Well, it makes sense, it just wasn't written properly. Despite Alex's genuine effort, you ultimately found it too difficult to be able to step outside your own head enough to let you, yourself actually try and work through things together. And she eventually decided she couldn't be with someone who loved being miserable more than she loved her. A loss hit you hard and snapped you into your reality. You've been taking her advice and pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone lately. The two of you recently went out for coffee for the first time since the split and your future is uncertain. She did seem genuinely happy that you were doing better now. Despite all the clear progress that you've made lately, you still carry the weight of your insecurities practically everywhere with you. And you even have some days still where you can't do much at all. These days it's very tempting for you to slip back into older and healthier habits, but much to your own surprise, you've somehow managed to avoid a major backslide. You know that you have a long way to go before you can feel like your life is spinning totally out of control, and even when you do, you'll never be ever be rid of your depression completely. But you have a strong support network, and for the first time, you can remember you're actually feeling optimistic. Things are alright, Mom. 
Well, you see her mouth tighten and worry. Her eyes soften when she sees you smiling. We, we really want you. We really want to thank you for taking the time to play Depression Quest. We realize it might not be the most enjoyable, enjoyable game you've ever played, or even the easiest, since we sincerely appreciate your involvement. If you would like to contribute to the developers and to Ifred, yeah, yeah. Like Depression yourself, Depression Quest does not have an end, really. There is no neat resolution to Depression, and it was important to us that Depression Quest's own resolution reflect, reflect that. Instead of a tidy ending, we want to just provide a series of outlooks that take moving forward. After all, that's all we can really do with Depression. Just keep moving forward. And at the end of the day, it's our, our outlook and support from people, just like you, that makes all the difference in the world. Thanks again. <sighs> oh man, that was a really nice game. It's just... It's really... I don't know. You get a kind of retarded feeling playing this game if you really think about it. Because, you know, I never really understood what depression is like. Seriously, how can you hate yourself so much that you feel you're worthless and just stupid? It doesn't make sense to me. No, it does. And I guess this depression quest has achieved its quest, really. Explain to me what depression is, and if I find someone who needs, who might, if maybe one of my friends might be in need of help, then maybe I could help them better. Well, to whoever made this game, these dudes, you guys are awesome. Bro. Thanks for watching.